Thank you very much for joining me on News Hour Direct, Mr. Salman Khurshid, the former Union Minister, senior Congress leader, and Mr. Salman Khurshid. The Congress extremely happy with the results of this uh, election. Uh, what do you think the message of this election of 2024 is all about? Well, I, it's difficult to describe it as one single message, and I, I think there are a whole lot of messages that come from an election, particularly of an election uh, over such a large uh, area uh, as the, the whole country. Um, so one could pick on messages that have come, but there's an overall message, perhaps, uh, an aggregate message. And the aggregate message, perhaps, is that uh, many things uh, that the government uh, has done over the last five years, let's say five years, uh, were, didn't appeal as much to, to the average Indian citizen as the government might have hoped that it would. Uh, many, many, many factors, I guess, have, have been accepted and has been, have been appreciated, and that's reflected in different parts, different parts of the country. But I think there is an overall view that not, not all was well and not all was right, and therefore, uh, people have given a caution. Given a caution, I guess, is the message. So, so you don't, you're not among those who believe that this is a mandate against Modi or that uh, the India alliance uh, uh, probably has a chance uh, at, at staking claim to form the government because as far as we can see the numbers, yes, it's a reduced mandate, but BJP still happens to be the single largest party and the single largest uh, poll alliance continues to be the NDA? Well, certainly that's true. That is true. And that's why they seem uh, way ahead of uh, uh, the, the, in the race to form a government. Uh, they have the status quo uh, advantage. They have, they have the uh, single, single largest party advantage. And they have, of course, the overall, overall majority figure of their alliance. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But... If somebody was to say that this is all in pink of health, all is fine and it's time to celebrate, I would think that if one was serious and one was concerned about the, uh, the, the BJP and its, at, and its allies, uh, they would say that, look, we need to do some, some reflection. Uh, we, are, we are lucky that we've, we've got back into government, but we need to reflect on things which have not been appreciated, perhaps if, if I can put it like that. And what do we need to do that the acceptability level is, is much higher? What, what do we need to do? I think this is what any serious, any serious participant would want to do. But I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly how this message uh, has been taken by the, the ruling, ruling alliance and uh, what they think that they need to do about it. They may, they may find that this is worth their while and they, they need to make no cost, cost corrections, but that's their call and their decision. Uh, Mr. Salman Khushi, the as far as the Congress party is concerned, yes, you have uh, almost had a 100% or close to a 80%, uh, 80 to 100% rise in uh, the number of seats that you have in the Lok Sabha. However, out of the overall seats contested, uh, the Congress party uh, has a strike rate of 30%. Do you think while it is time to celebrate for the Congress party, there is a, a, a distance that the Congress will still need to cover to come back uh, to its uh, earlier uh, days of glory? Well, absolutely. When I, when I talked about caution uh, that the ruling party or ruling alliance might wish to give itself, I think equally uh, there, are, there are issues that we need to handle. Uh, we may call it a celebration, we may call it a sense of, of relief, satisfaction, uh, whatever you may call it. But it's very clear, it's clear to anybody that uh, we are off the mark and we can't say that this is all that we were hoping to achieve and we've achieved that. We were obviously hoping to achieve more than this and we were hoping to achieve more than this on, in a united combined effort of all the alliance partners. It was not the Congress alone. Congress may have been seen as driving the alliance. Congress may have been seen as, as a party that will come, come out with the largest number when the, when the results come in, etc. But be that as it may, everybody was contributing. 
and in everybody contributing the target obviously was that we would reach the majority target which we didn't and therefore a caution for us as well and the caution for us as well that there is something more that needs to be done in whatever we may have offered and how brilliantly we may have offered it but there is something more that people were hoping that we would give or something more that the people have yet come to a conclusion that we haven't been able to provide so let's get back to the drawing boards and work again third time in opposition how how seriously uh, will the congress party need to look at its road ahead and what do you think when you say that yes you expected more what do you think more needs to be done as far as the congress is concerned because uh, let's say states uh, like uh, Himachal Pradesh, where you have a government, you haven't been able to get a single Lok Sabha seat. Uh, the state uh, like uh, uh, even uh, Madhya Pradesh, where you've just fought a battle uh, of uh, the assembly elections, you don't have a single seat. It's a clean 100% sweep uh, for the BJP. Similarly, Uttarakhand. Uh, what what does the Congress need to do? Going back to the drawing board, specifically on these states. Well, look, I, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, quick reactions on, on this will not be a good thing. Uh, just, to, just to take an example, let's look at Himachal Pradesh. Now, obviously, as, as far as parliamentary, parliamentary election is concerned, we don't have a satisfactory result. But there were by-elections. There were by-elections which must have been hotly contested, where people had switched the party and gone off and gone off and got disqualified. Now, there majority of those seats have come to us in the by-elections. So, therefore, to come to any one single proposition about what the state of, of Himachal Pradesh is, is very difficult to make now without serious, deeper analysis. But, of course, Madhya Pradesh is a problem, Chhattisgarh is a problem, and we, uh, uh, we think that this is a problem that can't just be wished away. We'll have to do something on it. Uh, we'll have to analyze and figure out why this has happened. But remember that this is an election where very dominant, very dominant, established, stable parties were completely wiped out. Look at what's happened in Andhra Pradesh. Look at, look at what's happened in Orissa. So I think a, a larger analysis is called for what is happening in the country, why with the dominant force, at least till yesterday, till before the election results came, a dominant force that the BJP and the NDA were, why they faltered somewhere, if at all it can be right to say that they have faltered. Why have they faltered? Why did they not get pushed back further from what our ambitions were requiring us to do? And why have established parties suddenly been driven out completely? So I think there's some analysis that needs to be done. But we are only really concerned about what we've been able to achieve. But the analysis as far as our own achievements are concerned again has to be a complicated analysis because this achievement can't be attributed entirely to the Congress. It is the alliance, and not everything that the alliance has got or partners in the alliance have got can be attributed to entirely their own effort and not, not to a joint or a combined effort of the Congress with them. So please give it a few days so that we can do this analysis, get back more returns, and then finally come up with some propositions. Let me ask you the question about uh, the south of India, uh, where the Congress party uh, had made a public statement saying that uh, the BJP will not be able to make any entry into the southern bastions other than Karnataka, and uh, uh, they would uh, really go down to half in the north. Now, as far as the south is concerned, yes, Tamil Nadu, the BJP has uh, drawn a blank, but in Andhra Pradesh, they have three seats. They've made a foray into Kerala. They have one seat. And Karnataka, where there is a Congress government, you won the assembly elections. The BJP hasn't done too badly. Uh, of course, worse than the last uh, Lok Sabha elections, but not too badly. Uh, do you think that ambition of the Congress uh, party uh, has been thwarted uh, by the BJP? Well, I mean, it depends on what language you want to use. Uh, you, are, you are pitching me against, against words used by wiser people in the party when they describe what is the likelihood of the election results between the North and the South. 
um, where it was to be half and where it used to be saf, etc. Yes, I am quoting uh, Jairam Ramesh, the, the, who said the, south the, mein, south mein saf or north mein half. Well, I know, but I'm saying they, they don't, yeah, 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 fine. But those, they don't describe, describe the reflected, reflected, uh, absorbed, absorbed conclusion of what has actually happened. Aspirations, projections, etc., that one makes for an election are a completely in a different frame of mind. But when you've got results, you need to take up the results very carefully and assiduously examine them to see what really has happened. Has something changed dramatically or are they just marginal changes that happen in elections and democracy in any case? But sure, I mean, I, I, that's the point taken and this is something that we should, should examine. Uh, is it is it that we've opened up something because of uh, of self goals that we've opened up something which allows our main adversary to come in, or is it just a natural way in which things happen and that the adversaries uh, find more space for themselves from time to time and then they shrink back or they don't shrink back, but they are they are there to stay. So I, I think that we shouldn't make uh, quick assumptions about these things. Let's look at them carefully and then come up with some solutions or some propositions. So, so let, me, let me also ask you, Rajasthan unexpected uh, bounty for the Congress party there because the BJP seemed to be in a bit of a disarray. Uh, in Gujarat also you've uh, gone through the very strong fortress to get one seat where there were none over the last two elections. Uh, do you think these are green shoots uh, that would uh, give the Congress party a shot in the arm? Well, I sincerely hope so. Uh, I sincerely hope that they are green shoots. I sincerely hope that they reflect something on the ground and they're not just, they're, they're not coincidental, coincidental and surprise, surprise, uh, one-off events, etc. Uh, but again, as I said, if we are, if we are asking for more time, to consider what is happening with BJP showing up in places where they were not there in the past. Similarly, I think we must have more time to figure out how whatever you call green shoots or possible green shoots have appeared. And are these green shoots with, with uh, deep roots or are they green shoots with very, very, uh, very small roots, etc.? These are things that we must and th those people who are in charge of our states will have to work out and then come up with with some ideas. Uh, do you miss not having uh, contested elections in Uttar Pradesh, uh, given the fact that this time around, uh, the Congress uh, has done better than uh, over the last uh, several elections in UP itself? Uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, you've, you've been an important uh, pillar of uh, Uttar Pradesh from the past. Do you miss having uh, contested this election? I sincerely hope there are others who miss me because my, my, my missing something is not really that important. But of course, uh, of course, this is a, a very sensitive issue with me. Um, I, I thought it was an important election uh, in terms of what is happening in the country. It was an important election as well about how we could bounce back in seats which we held in the past but we had lost more recently. And therefore, I was really, 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 really to go, and we worked very hard there. But then, the larger cause, the greater cause, is what matters. Uh, and as long as, as long as we are somewhere more comfortable than we were in the yester years, that's good enough for me. What happens to me and what I can do in times to come will be for my party and my colleagues to decide. Well, Mr. Salman Khushid, so let me let me ask you this. You speak about uh, larger parties that have been wiped away. You're talking about the YSR Congress. Well, it's an offshoot of the Congress itself. Uh, in fact, uh, the Congress uh, party, if there wasn't the estrangement between Jagan Reddy, the Congress party uh, and the Jagan Reddy would be together today. Similarly, in Odisha, if you look at it, yes, the BJD has been wiped out, but uh, it should have been the Congress, uh, you know, uh, which was the principal opposition to the BJD in the past, uh, which has ceded ground to the BJP there, which is now in a position to form the government in that state. Uh, do you think, do you think uh, the Congress's uh, celebratory mode at this point, where they've done well, no doubt, uh, but uh, there are miles to go before uh, you sleep? I, 
I, I think uh, the idea of, of going to sleep is something that we must give up. Uh, we've got to stay, we have to stay awake for a long, long time and give up, give up on the comfort of sleep. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. We will continue to do the work. It's not just work about winning, winning states and seats and so on. It's also work about what is the aggregate projection of India's policy, whether it's India's foreign policy or India's domestic policy, India's relations with the world, India's own projection as a democracy. Now, very clearly, very clearly, uh, without making this controversial, there are differences of opinion between us and the, the ruling establishment about what democracy means. Perhaps sometimes there are differences of opinion about what secularism means. Now, this will have to be sorted out one day, whoever remains in power, but this will have to be sorted out as a national consensus. What is secularism? What is equality? And what, what is democracy? We need to work, work on these. Now, I don't know whether the government will create an atmosphere in which a conversation like this can take place for the benefit of the entire country. But do you think a stronger opposition, which is the mandate of this uh, uh, particular election, uh, will give you a conducive environment uh, if, if blockages is not the only objective and uh, debates and discussions of this kind uh, come up in parliament? Certainly, I, I, I think there's no doubt about, no doubt about that. A, a, a strong opposition is good for democracy. And I don't have to say this myself because this is something that the ruling, ruling uh, establishment itself has repeatedly said, whether they believe it or not, but they have repeatedly said that India must have a strong opposition. Now, India has a strong opposition, but that, that creates more responsibility for the ruling establishment as, is these, as it does for the opposition itself. So the great challenge for us up to now was to see if we can displace this government, but the challenge henceforth will be that we do a good job and a remarkable job as an opposition and a responsible opposition, not opposition for the sake of opposition, but opposition for better governance of the country.